Hello, what is going on guys? I'm the C-H-A-L-L -L, and welcome back to another video. Now today I have with me a serial winner. Now if I mention to you one of the best modern era players in British Basketball League with the achievements such as the 2010 BBL Cup, the 2011 BBL Cup, the 2013 BBL Trophy, the 2015-16 All-Star British Team of the Year participant, the 2016 BBL Playoff Final participant and the final MVP... Most of you that know British basketball will know who I'm talking about. I am joined by the brilliant Mike Tuck. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks, thanks for that lead in there. That, that was nice. Some kind words there. Uh, trust me, I looked on your profile and I saw the achievements. I'm like, I need to do an introduction with those achievements because, you know, you are arguably, you know, the best British basketball league player in modern times with the achievements that you've succeeded. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the best. I think there's a couple other guys who are up there, but... Uh... Yeah, I think I've just I've been around for so long that uh, you know I've, I've won a few things on the way, and I'm blessed just you know to still be playing and, and have such a great career with some some great memories and moments within that. So, first question: um, What do you think about the decision to to end the season? Obviously, we saw the uh, the league announce that they are going to cancel the season. That's been uh, officially ended with no title or playoffs. So, uh, what do you think to it? And is it less pressure to finish it off now rather than prolong the inevitable? I think it was the right decision. Uh, I think, you know, with, with everything that's going on right now and, and just the current state of, of the league and everything, I think it's the right decision. Listen, the BBL is not the Premier League. You know, not, not all our guys stuck around here. We, we had to fly most of our players home. Every team has, you know, at least three, four, some, some teams have more import players that, uh, that wanted to get home to be closer to their families during the pandemic. And, um, so they're all at home right now. If if we started the league up now, trying to get all all the teams back with all these players, I think it would just be an absolute nightmare. And then if you were to start off the league without your import players, you wouldn't be putting as good a product out on the floor. Um, I think it, I think it just wouldn't be good for the league. So I think they made the right decision and just just kind of drawing a line under it and and just saying let's 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 uh, let's finish this season and look forward to next. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, so just going into uh, talking about the, the season, now it's ended. Um, you know, the team, you know, in the top 10, uh, 1,060 points plus our negative. You know, how would you sum up the season in, in your words? How would you summarize the season for the team this year? Uh, I think it wasn't one of our best seasons, but it wasn't one of our worst. I think the league was extremely competitive this season. Um, and obviously we had the new format to the league this year where the cup kind of started off as the preseason tournament and then we went into league games mixed in with trophy games so it was just a little bit different um the the regular season games were cut short usually we play three games against everybody this season it was only a home and away so two so for me you know obviously being here so long it was a bit of a transition getting used to the new format of the league um and then you know after the sharks i think we started off the season really well we you know we, we hit the cup we hit the cup running i think we, you know we won some big games in the cup. Uh, unfortunately got knocked out in the semis and then um and then and then hit a bit of a, a, a kind of speed bump going into the league um where around christmas time you know we, we had racked up a few losses but we, we managed to pick ourselves up um heading into february january february so uh and you know finished the league in, in sixth place um, and we were, you know, I think we had turned a corner and we were really looking forward to, you know, finishing off that the season and heading into playoffs. But unfortunately, all this happened. So we'll never really know what, what would have been. But um, really enjoyed this year. You know, it's my uh, 11th season with the club and, and just enjoyed, enjoyed the team. You know, the guys we had on the team were great this season and, and really uh, kind of sparked my, my interest in playing. Last season, I was... I was kind of looking towards the end there, and, and then with the group of guys we had this year, you know, it just kind of really sparked my love for basketball again. So I, overall, it was a great season. It's just a shame it ended the way it did. You know, due to it being rescheduled at a different date, you've got your testimonial as well. I do indeed. Yeah, it was actually supposed to be this past weekend on the 6th of June, um, but obviously it's it's been canceled. So we're just waiting to hear back from the venue right now in terms of a rescheduled date, but uh, looking to do it right after next season. So end of May, first couple of weeks of June. Um, as soon as that date is announced, I will be um, putting that out there on, on uh, my social media channels and the Sharks will be putting out there as well. So uh, 
really looking forward to that. I know, I'm, I know, you know, in these kind of times, it's, it's, it's so easy to get negative and get down. So I'm, I'm just trying to stay positive and gives me another year to plan it and, and make it a big deal and, and make it more of a celebration, not only of me and, and, and the Sharks, but of British basketball in general. To be fair, when the testimonial does come around, I'll definitely be uh, down there trying to get an interview with you afterwards and before. Good stuff, man. Yeah, we'll get you down there for sure. So what's it like with the, the coach and the current players? You know, do you feel like the team's in a good strong Strong position in terms of the the coach and the whole format and the style of play that you're playing. Well, like I said, they changed the format of the league this past season, and it was it was a bit of a learning curve for us. Um, we kind of hit our stride really early, and we you know we thought we did really well in the cup, and then you know you get knocked out, and then you're kind of deflated, and the gas gets pulled out. And also in the cup, they split it into north and south. So we hadn't, we didn't never, you hadn't even played a team from the South until, um, you know, the lead up to Christmas, like almost midway through December, end of December. So that was another strange thing to get used to. Uh, I believe next season they'll be looking to go back to the, to the old format. Um, so uh, it'll be back to the way that I'm used to and most of the guys in the league are used to. So I think it'll be easy transition for me. Um, but this will be a long off season. You know, we played our last game game on the 13th, Friday, the 13th of March. And we won't be picking up, we won't be playing another game until, you know, fingers crossed, end of September, early October. So um, it's going to be a learning curve in terms of our guys going to be staying in shape and, and being able to deal with, you know, two months extra onto their off season. How have you been uh, training and keeping fit during this lockdown? Like, have you... Uh, got some stuff at home to uh, keep the training schedule going and how has that been going yeah it was, I mean it was a bit of a it was a bit of a struggle early on because I don't really have much I, you know I've always had access to gyms and, and weight rooms and stuff like that around the city so I've never really had any gear at home so um, I picked up running uh, right off the bat uh, I think I took it there was about a week period where I didn't really know what to do with myself and I was kind of getting down the dumps and then I saw a lot of people posting you know, screenshots of, of their daily runs and stuff like that. So I kind of, I took it on myself to challenge myself. Running has never been something that I've been into and uh, cardio, you know, most basketball players would tell you they're just, they just hate it. They want to get it in on the court rather than just, you know, boring running. But I just found, you know, if I pop those earphones in, get the right, right playlist, playlist going and, and I make sure that I'm tracking it on the running app. So I kind of challenged myself. Uh, I got it going. So I did, I've done over, um, 100k a month since since lockdown started um and then uh once they eased up um restrictions on the park i started going doing uh training with uh, one of my buddies who's a personal trainer in, in a local park here so i've been getting stuff in like that in terms of on the court there's an outdoor court about five minutes from my house um, i've been over there a few times but uh haven't really done much basketball work um kind of just wait until they lift the restrictions so we can get back into an indoor court before we do that so in terms of looking ahead to next season, what are your aims as a, as a player? Do you want the club to maybe aim for top two, maybe try and get, you know, around the top three and try and aim for that playoff win? 100%. I mean, you know, silverware is always the goal going into any season, you know, and within the BBL, we're very lucky here because we have, you know, there's four different things, five if you count the British Basketball All-Stars uh, Championship. So there's, there's lots of different things that you can win. So the season is, there's always, you know, it doesn't get dry through that mid season. Um, now I've won the cup, I've won the trophy, I've won the playoffs, but I've never won the league. We've come in second place uh, twice before, but I've never won the league. So that, that would be for me for personally, for me a goal, just to kind of get the well-rounded silverware in my closet. Um, that would be nice to win, to win the league. Um, and, and, uh, you know, for me, you know, I'm getting older. So this, this is, you know, could potentially be one of my last chances. So just got to go out there and, and give it my all. Um, now, this might be a tough one. If you can pick one, maybe two or three teams in particular that may be one of the bigger threats next season, without showing any disrespect to the other teams, which ones would you say, you know, on the base of this season and maybe what they could be doing, who could you say the biggest threat could be next season to reaching that silverware goal? I mean, at this point in the year, it, it's so hard to tell. Obviously, you know, we just found out that the league was canceled, you know, a week ago now. But um, in terms of this season, um, teams that really stood out to me, um, you know, Glasgow were really, really on point this year. I think they recruited well and, and they had a really good coaching staff there. Um, Leicester and Newcastle. 
I always consider big rivals for the Sharks. Um, they're just they're just always super consistent, um, and and they recruit well. You know, I think Newcastle was was did well, although we did do play well against them this season, but they they did recruit well. Um, and then Leicester as well had a, a really solid squad. And then you can you can never count out London either. Uh, London London Lions, they're just. You know, with Justin Robinson on down there, the reigning MVP, I think he's just a really good organized guy who, who keeps everybody in check. And then, you know, they picked up Ovi midway through the season. And they've just – they've got a lot of weapons. They've got, a you know, a lot of talent, a lot of London talent down there that guys want to play in, at home in front of their home crowd. So um, they're, they're always a threat. But there's lots of teams – that are threats in this league. Uh, you don't, you can't count anybody out in this league. And um, right now, it's too hard to say. We don't know how this um, pandemic is going to affect teams financially. Um, what what space they're going to be in to recruit players, and and also the change to the the import rules where you're allowed uh, five imports instead of four now. What teams are going to take advantage of that? Are are, are more teams going to go with Americans? Are, are more teams going to go with British players? I read an, an article the other day saying that Glasgow potentially might be looking at doing an all British team. So at this point, we we, we don't know, but um, I'm excited for next season. I think a lot of guys will be raring to go because they'll be sitting at home for so long. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm I'm personally really excited for next season as well because I think that uh, especially during the modern day of basketball, I think especially in Britain, I think that the, the competition is getting closer and closer each year. I think every year you can't pick an out and out winner. I think it's so close compared to uh, past years. And do you feel the same? Yeah, 100%. I think that um, if, you know, 10 years ago, you were looking at like, you know, Newcastle was being super consistent with, with Fab Flournoy and they, they were winning everything. And then Leicester kind of went through a few years with, where they went on their runs. And now we've, now these, I would say the past probably three seasons have been super close. You know, you don't, you don't really know who's going to be the right, right winner. And, and um, throughout the league, you know, the playoff spots uh, towards the end are, you know, everybody's jockeying for, for position. Whereas, you know, when I first came in the league, there was probably, you know, the first four teams were well ahead of everybody else. And then the last four spots were jogging for now it's, you know, the two or three spot through to the nine, 10 spot. You don't know who's going to finish where because everybody's within one or two losses of each other. So I think it's great. I think it's it's um, it shows where the league's heading. Um, and I think it shows the strength of the league that that, you know, the those those teams that used to be kind of the bottom feeders are, are starting to figure it out. And we're, we were putting a really putting a pr productive and competitive product on the floor. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, so Mike, thank you very, very much. Um, what I will say is once this pandemic is over and we get back to some form of normality, I would like to get down on that court and do some basketball challenges with your teammates. You're on, man. We'll, we'll, we'll have you down there, man. We'll have you dunking in no time. <laughs> well, I actually, to be fair, and I only just rediscovered this a couple of weeks ago, um, when I was about six, seven, um, I went to watch the Sheffield Sharks play Plymouth around 2006, 2007. And I got to do some uh, some shots uh, before the game with the team. And I got to warm up with the team as well. So, um, you know, if that does happen, it'll be my first time on court for nearly 15 years. So it would be a dream to come out there and do some challenges with you guys. Amazing, man. Let's make it happen, man. Let's make it happen. Absolutely. You guys heard it here first. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, Mike, for the interview. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys for watching this interview. Please like, comment, subscribe. We've got some more content on the way with Mike. Uh, we've got a very special challenge video, which we're going to film right now. Uh, I'm not going to give anything away, but it's related to basketball. So that's going to give you some broad ideas. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Thanks, buddy. Thank you very much. My name is the C-H-A-L-L. -L. Please like, comment, subscribe. Goodbye.